o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Yes, we are. Woo! Oh, yeah. If you'll clap your hands, we're going to take you back and sing you some real classic rock and roll music. That's right. We'll try and warm it up a little bit, huh? When I was just a little boy, you know, my one and only joy was listening to that good old rock and roll. Well, I just turned 59. If you want to keep me satisfied, all you got to do is play that good old rock and roll. Like Chuck Berry. When you're in your seat, take off your shoes and patch your feet. We're doing a dance that can't be beat. We're barefoot, yeah, yeah, we're barefoot. Oh, we're barefoot, yeah, we're barefoot. Shake my nerves and you're out of my brain. What kind of love drives a man insane? You broke my will, but oh, what a thrill. Your goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Come along, be my party dog. Come along, be my party dog. Come along, be my party dog. And I'll make love to you, to you. I'll make love to you. But when I was just a little boy, get on my Take you back to first hair record for the tokens, 1961. Everybody clap your hands and we will sing Tonight I Fell in Love. Come on. Come on, you're going to be our percussion section. It'll also give you a nice breeze, you know. It'll make a nice breeze for everybody. Oh. 
heart beats so fast, I pray that it will last till the end of time. Come on. bring blankets right just in case it gets a little chilly you have your blankets oh, oh, man. they have them in the back if you need it you need you're a always prepared uh, group got together uh, in Brooklyn New York you know some of you have must have heard of Brooklyn yeah I went to uh, there's a place called Lincoln High School in Brooklyn New York now I was in the chorus in Lincoln High School and this kid was sitting next to me in the chorus this is a true true story and he asked me if he wanted, you know, he wanted me to come over to his house one day. He was going to start a rock and roll group. And he lived about five blocks from where I lived in Brooklyn. So I went over to his house one day after school. I, he sat down at the piano and I sang a couple of songs and I, I made the audition. So uh, that's where the group started. And we were called the Link Tones. And the kid's name was Neil Sedaka. I don't know if you ever know that. <laughs> Seen him lately? Hey, where there is he? he is. No, he's not here. Oh, uh, he never later, shows up. Hey. I don't know. Anyway, that's how we all got started back in high school. That's how long we've been doing this. And we still, we still feel like uh, when we're on stage, we're doing it for the first time. And we just, we just love doing it. And we're, we appreciate that you all come out, and especially in this nice summer weather here. Ooh. Now, you know, we get a lot of requests to do the B-side of Tonight I Fell in Love. It's a song that we wrote. We wrote Tonight I Fell in Love. We wrote this song called I'll Always Love You. That's the B-side of the record. Now, I know that... Uh, None of our kids or our grandkids have any idea what a B-side of a record is, right? They don't even know what a record is. Do you remember we went to a store, we bought a record for 79 cents. We knew the B-side of every record. We knew the color of the label. We knew the writing on the label. But uh, I don't know, those days are gone. No more records, but this music is still here. And this is, this is the B-side, I'll always love you.
singing. That's a should have been. The B side. Been an a side. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna do a. Uh, uh, some personal information about myself. This uh, this October, I will be celebrating my 58th wedding anniversary. Yeah. All with the same girl. And I tell people I've been married 58 years. They all say to the same person. I say, yeah, yeah. What's the secret? The secret is after the show, I go home. You know, this is my job. I love my job. But when my job is over, I go home. These two guys. They know about you already. They've been married about five times between them. It's not about They, they don't go that. home after the show. I don't have a home anymore. They, uh, they, <laughs> he doesn't even have a home anymore. <laughs> they go to the parties, they go to the bars, and they, uh, that's, that's the reason, you know, they, 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 they're, they're both okay, al okay. almost broke, right? <laughs> Anyhow, almost gone. We're going to do a song about, uh, you know, uh, the type of women that they meet on the road, and these are the type of women that's responsible for the depletion of their bank accounts. Tell them, Kurt. Here's my story, it's sad but true. About a girl that I once knew. She took my love. And? Uh, that's not all she took. What else? She took my love. And? and? Oh, you want a list? I got one too. Please. She took my love and she ran around with every single lie. God, come on, we're in New Jersey. Okay. Right. One, 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 one more time. With every single sing it. Oh yeah. You know her. Right? Now, if you didn't do that, we couldn't start the song. Uh huh. You ready? A uh, one, two, three. Hey, hey. You did a lot of it, didn't you? Uh, you we got a dance floor here, but it's, it was too hot to dance, right? Yeah. No, yeah, really. No, no. Oh, you can't. 
How about oh, back there? I no, don't it's on the other side of go that there. sign. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't live around here. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do a, a, a... You want to hear a newer song? No, they don't. Do some? This is the newest song we're going to do. Uh, we had a big hit record in 1967. That's, the, that's about the newest song we're going to do, all right? Now, if you remember, if you listen to the radio in the middle 60s, that was a period of, in the music business known as the, the British Invasion. Remember that? Yeah. Not good for us at all, no. No, I mean, if you, if you turn on the radio during the British Invasion, I would say about maybe 80 or 90% of the music coming through your speakers were from artists that came from the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. It was really so tough for an American act to get played on the radio during the British Invasion, but... We were very fortunate to be signed to a major label. We were signed to Warner Brothers Records. So they had the power to have a few stations in the middle of the country play this record. They played the record, the phones lit up, and it spread across the country and it became our third goal record. So we're gonna do it now, and I hope you all remember this one. They will. And I hope I remember it also. What is this? Thanks, Dennis. Can you see that? No. Here's that around if you wish. <laughs> this one is called Portrait of My Love, our third goal record. Ready, Dennis? Oh, one, one, two, three, and... There could never be a portrait of my love For nobody could paint a dream
the bees and be me. Huh. I got a sweeter sound, baby, than the bird in the tree. Like you to sing the hey, hey part. Sing it out loud. On three, everybody sing. On three. Come on, on. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Everybody now. One, two, hey, hey. Everybody say hi to Mr. Kurt Yajin. Thank you. I'll give you a little, uh, Thank you. A little background about my friend Kurt here. Originally uh, brought up in Detroit, Michigan. And now he lives up by exit, uh, I don't know, on the turnpike. 16, anyway. Hasbrook Heights. The best exit, he says. The exits. <laughs> Listen, Hasbrook Heights, you know, Kurt has been in show business his entire life. Uh, most people don't know this, but he was in the original Broadway cast of Jesus Christ Superstar. He was in that show. He was much taller then. Yeah. Oh, he was. Long, <laughs> long hair. <laughs> he was also in the motion picture hair. He was. No comment. <laughs> I kept my clothes on. Now, he has worked with great artists. He's worked with John Lennon. He's worked with Cindy Lauper. He's worked with Carly Simon. He's worked with Simple Simon, I don't know who well, I, I know him. Uh, you I know him. him. Anyway, everybody say hi to Kurt. Say hi, Kurt. Hi. hi. Hey, Woodbridge, thank you. Hi, Kurt. Yeah. How you doing? Now, uh, <clears throat> Kurt's been with us now, I guess, almost five years, right? Almost. Yeah. Now, before Kurt joined the group, he had replaced this guy that was in the group with us for eight years, and the guy's name was Jay Trainer. Some of you know who Jay Trainer is, but uh, whoever, some of you may not know that name, but Jay Trainer was the original J of J and the Americans, before J Black. J Trainer made that great, great record, their first big number one million selling record, She Cried. Remember that beautiful song? Now, I, I think if J Trainer had not recorded She Cried with J and the Americans, I don't know what would have happened to, you know, to their careers, but I think that's the record that set them off and they had a bunch of hit records afterwards. J, uh, we lost J just about, uh, five years ago and we love we still love singing that song and Kurt's gonna do She Cried because it's such a beautiful beautiful piece of music.
but to her it had just begun. And when I told her another girl had caught my eye, she cried. And Beautiful. Love you, Jay. Nice. Thank you. I love that. That's great. Thank you. Ah, that's yeah. nice. That was nice. Besides the Tokens having a really remarkable recording career, the 1960s through the 70s, the Tokens had a second great career as record producers. Okay. Now, uh, some of you uh, out there may not know what a record producer is or what the job is, so I'll give you a little synopsis, all right? We, uh... <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> okay. She always okay. interrupts me, my mom. <laughs> uh, anyway, we had a few records on the national charts, so it afforded us uh, to open up a little, a little office on Broadway and 53rd Street. It's now the, uh, became, it was the, uh, then it was called the Ed Sullivan Building. You remember Ed Sullivan, right? Yes, you do. So anyhow, we uh, had a little office and we would uh, audition singing groups or singing artists or songwriters, they used to come up to the office and they, they would show us their new songs. Or sometimes we'd think of a song maybe 50 or 60 years old and think of a way how to make it contemporary for the time. Then we'd just figure out, okay, what singer went with what song? We figured that one out and we brought them into the recording studio at night. Now we got the band together and we did the arrangements and uh, these people that we brought into the studio had never recorded before. They were complete unknowns. And the next morning, we'd knock on all the doors of all the independent record companies in New York. There were so many back then. And uh, we tried to sell that record that we made the night before. And we did have a lot of success selling these records and making a lot of unknown artists, pretty big, big stars. So we're going to do a medley of uh, two records that went to number one and sold millions of records and made two groups very happy and pretty popular. Remember a group called The, Sh the, uh, the Happenings? You remember them? They originally from Patterson, New Jersey. The, pa the happenings and the uh, one day four girls came up. Uh, four, they were teenagers. They uh, they worked for the New York Telephone Company in the Bronx, and they sang a few songs for us. And we said, Yeah, they have they have the potential. We think that they they can be hit artists. Those four girls were the chiffons. So these are the two records that we went in and we made number one and we made them a few hundred dollars besides. <laughs>
Remember one fine day by the chiffon. I produced that record. Getting dark and romantic. Some romantic chords we're hearing right back. Ooh. Lovely to be in love, you know. Be proud of Ooh. it if you are. If you're in love, raise your right hand. Be very proud of it. Don't be shy. Six people. How about if you're in lust? Raise your left hand. Okay. Twelve people. Uh, if you're in heat, like we are, raise both hands. They're all in heat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> This is our lovers portion of the show. You can do a little seat ooh, dancing if you like and get closer to the one you love or the one you want to love. We're going to start in 1957 and take a little ride down the road to Philadelphia where they went on American ooh, Bandstand, when it was really Bandstand. The name of the group was The Raised, number one song. All right, now, this portion of the show, we'd love you. Or, well, I guess you can't dance or, or unless you want to go back to the parking lot or something. I don't know. You know I, I don't know. Oh, over there. There's like four people. There's room for about eight more. I guess. Hi. Anyway, if you're not dancing, which most of you aren't, we want you to sing along with us, all right? Now, I don't think we're going to have to tell you the words to these songs because they should be embedded in your brain since you were back in high school. So, And I, I'll make you a promise. We're going to do a whole bunch of songs, and I think for every one that you sing, it's gonna make you feel younger and younger and younger. And at the end of this medley, everybody should feel like they're about 17 again. Oh, I like that. So what's wrong with that, right? But, but I'll help you out. I'll sing the first half of the verse of this first song. I want everybody in New Jersey to sing the second half. Ready? Took a walk and passed your house. Yeah! All the seeds were pulled and drawn 
from within the dim light cast to silhouettes on the shade of what a love be God Put his arms around your waist, held you tight, kisses I could almost taste. Come on, sing it. In the night, wondered why I'm not the guy. Everybody knows this part. Come on, sing it. And they're all in key as yeah, well. Everybody the harmony is sounding really good. Yeah. So keep it up. While we take you back, who remembers 1954? Honesty? Oh. I mean, we're the only one. Wow. Listen, let me tell you, I don't even remember 2004. But I remember 1954. It was much more good. fun back then. For good reason. There were songs like this that came out and started what we call rock and roll. Group was from Los Angeles, California, and their names were the Penguins. Mr. Sam Cook. Oh yeah. You're doing well with the uh, with the singing. Uh, I, this one may not be as easy, all right. But I I will help you out on this. I'll give you the first two words, and I hope you can sing the next two. Okay. Think hard. Darling, you. Starting to get a little yeah. darker. How about us? Uh, we? No. Except mine. <laughs> Me too. Uh, mine is well, we're going to take a little musical journey. Anyone like to go to the Bronx? Anybody want to go? Well, I do too. 1956, two guys from the South Bronx wrote and recorded a great song called, listen to it, Robert and Johnny Say. Song, what do you think? All right, 
right, last, uh, these uh, two guys from the Bronx. We just do a, we just did a duet with three people. I th what? The math doesn't work, but the, I think it sounded pretty good though. It works in the. In you want to do you want to do another duet? Yeah. With the three of us oh, from the Bronx. 1957, Johnny and Joe took us. Johnny and Joe, where'd they take us? They took us. Oh, over the mountain, across the sea. There's a girl oh, waiting for me. Oh, over the mountain, a girl waits for me. She waits for me, waits for me. But you're looking too young, we're gonna wind up our lover sports of the show. But not before we do a song from 1962. Great year for records. The song is recorded by Don and Juan. Now we've been on tour all year round. That's, that's actually we don't have day jobs. We don't have night jobs either. This, this is not a job, this is fun. We love this it. Is. Anyway, uh, on tour, I've always been Don, and you've always been Juan. Juan. So a nice outdoor Why? show. You want to switch parts tonight? You want to be Don and I'll be oh, Juan? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to be the Don, you know what I'm oh. saying. What are you saying? I don't, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You'll be the Don. Okay. I'll be the Juan. And yes, and you'll be on. Anyway, when you turned on the radio, this is the question that Don and Juan asked everybody. And now uh, the Don is going to ask the question. What's your name? Ooh, what's your name? Is it Mary or Sue? What's your name? Ooh, what's your name? Do I stand a chance with you? It's so hard to find a personality with charm like yours for me. Ooh, -wee, ooh, -wee, ooh, -wee. what's your What's your name? <laughs> what? All right. We're in Jersey now. They all know this one. On the count of three, everybody can end the song, all right? One, two, three. You guys, oh, we were in uh, we were in Bemidji, Wisconsin. In Minnesota. Four people <laughs> out of like two thousand of the uh, you guys are good, but there were a couple of people there from uh, I don't know from where were they from? South Amboy. South Amboy. They didn't know it. This is the end of the song. Shoo doo wah wah. Look at all the teenagers out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any kids? Now, if we forget any of the lyrics to any of these songs, this guy over there in the third row in the blue. What's up? Well, I'm watching you because if I forget the words, I just right. look at you. He knows every word He's to every me. song. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Left. 
They're sweating up here. Al, your skin is leaking. Your skin is leaking. On guitar, Mr. Al Carosi says, hi, Al. Al. On drums over there, Mr. Ron Wilson. Tripping over there is Bill now. Right here on medication. And they say hi to Paul Page, everybody. That's Paul. Our musical director on keyboards and vocals, say hi, Mr. Dennis DeBreezy. Say hi, Dennis. That's great. Now, this guy over here, you met everybody, but this guy over here in the beautiful pink shirt. Now, he was originally from the Bronx, New York, but he became a, a snowstorm or a snowbird or a snowflake, whatever you call it. He now lives in Boynton Beach, Florida, where it's probably cooler there than it is here tonight. That's true. Right? It must be cooler in Boynton Beach. Now, Bill has been in the music business also his whole life. And uh, I'll I, I tell you something about Bill a lot of people don't know. Do you remember in the 50s and the 60s, there were single artists, you know, just not, not vocal groups, but single artists that had big number one hit records. And they used to have uh, vocal groups helping uh, helping make those records number one they were backing up their vocals but nobody ever knew who they were you know they just uh, got paid a session fee and they helped make those records number one this guy sang on two major number one records and he helped make them number one do you remember a record called pretty little angel eyes by curtis lee you remember that one oh, yeah. Then my old friend from Coney Island, Barry Mann, had a big hit record called Who Put the Bump And Remember that one? Well, Bill sang both on both of those records, so say hi to Bill Reed now. Say Billy! Hi, Bill. Thanks. Thanks. Now, 
Okay, uh, like I said, we wrote most of the songs that we recorded and that we produced. And in the middle 60s, we wrote a song. Uh, the name of the song was called Please Write. And we wrote this song right during the time of the Vietnam War. And I think if you, uh, we're going to do it for you, and I think if you listen to the lyric to Please Write, it's as apropos today as it was back in the middle, in, in, you know, in the middle 60s in that t turbulent time. Now, I w we'd like to dedicate the, any, any ex-service people out there tonight? Yeah? Thank you very much you know, for being here. So we're going to sing this song for you guys and for anybody out there who have any loved ones that's fighting to protect this country in places all over the world that we can't even pronounce. And we just hope and pray that they all come back to the good old USA as soon as possible. Yes, <clears throat> so this is for all you guys. Everybody, please write. Please write while you are away. I'm waiting for your letter each day. Please write, please write, and tell me you're all right. Well, that's all I'm asking of you. Don't are low That's the time I know it's you that I adore For now and evermore Darling, please say you will rise oh, Angels, oh angels Hear my plea Speak my loved one Ticks away, and what more can I say? Please write the words I long to hear till you come back home. This heart will never roam. Pretty, it was that for soulful, soulful. Woo. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Ladies that. And gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out on an extra hot night. Thank you so much for showing up, showing us your support. I'd like to say a few words before we conclude our program tonight. I'd like to say a few words about our fearless leader right here. Not only did Jay produce and sing all of the lead vocals on all of the Token's top 10 and number one records. Jay was also the member of another famous singing group and not only sang with but produced for Tony Orlando and Dawn, Candida, uh, Knock Three Times, and a small little record for Tony called Tie a Yellow Ribbon. Ladies and gentlemen, the man knows how to produce. Also, for The Happenings, whom you heard we did a song before, we, it, he took an old song from the 30s, an old Gershwin tune, and turned it into a contemporary hit called I Got Rhythm. Also, Go Away, Little Girl, for The Happenings. And for The Chiffons, he produced their number one record, He's So Fine. So give it up for the great Jay Siegel, ladies and gentlemen. Just want a, a, a little note. Uh, any of you guys were here last week and saw Larry, Larry Chance? Well, I spoke to him this morning. 
And he told me to tell everybody hi. He's feeling fine. He had a little sinus infection or whatever, but he's okay. So I could tell him that I told you, all right? And if you see him, you could tell him I said so, all right? Now, I grew up in a little town called Brighton Beach in Brooklyn, New York. Some of you heard of it, you know? Now, I, I lived about two blocks from the beach. So in the summers, none of the kids that I grew up with, they didn't go to sleepaway camp. They didn't go to day camp. We spent our summers on the beach. And in Brooklyn, on the beach, every few blocks was a different singing group from a different high school. They weren't professional singers. Four or five guys used to get together, form a group, and sing on the beach. And they, you know, that's how we got the girls. You know, we used to try to draw the girls to us. The best singers got the most girls. Now, we used to sing this one song on the beach just for fun. And the kids, they loved it. And they used to, let it, they used to tell us, please sing that again. They used to make us sing it over and over again. And uh, they just loved how we sang this song. I was not even 16 years old. How would I ever think in my wildest dreams that six years later that that song that we used to sing on the beach just for fun would be a number one record in the United States and then number one in 36 countries all over the world and sell about 13 million records? We used to sing it just to get the girls, you know? Now, this, uh, this, uh, this record was used in so many television sitcoms and commercials on radio and TV and in a whole bunch of movies. Now, one day I woke up and I found out that The Lion Sleeps Tonight was featured in a small new movie called The Lion King. You remember that one? Yeah, well, that was good. Now, that was probably one of the biggest animated films in the history of the movie business. So. Uh, the, rec the movie uh, was so successful that RCA Victor, that was our record company, they re-released The Lion Sleeps Tonight for the second time over 40 years later, and it became a worldwide hit for the second time in a row, and we also then acquired a brand new audience of five-year-old kids. <laughs> this is the truth. I'm telling you the truth now. When the record was a hit for the second time, my granddaughter was five years old, and she was in kindergarten. And she told all her friends in her class, you know, my grandpa sings that song. And of course they, oh yeah, he sings it in the shower, he sings it in the garage. They, none of her friends believed her and she was really very upset. She was devastated that, you know, she was telling uh, a, a true, a, a true bit, of, bit of information to her friends and they didn't believe her. So, one day, to set the story straight, she brought me, into her kindergarten class for show and tell. It's true. She was very, very popular after that. Then they believed her, you know? Anyhow, uh, you know we're talking about that, the Wimoway song, you know that one, right? So we're gonna do it again for you now, and I'm gonna try to do it in the original key that I recorded it in when I was only 11 years old. <clears throat> they don't remember, they don't believe oh, that. Oh, a little stretch there, Jay. And the key of F, Al. F. F. You have like an F flat? No. <laughs> F low? Thanks a lot. <laughs> this is not easy, you know. And this is another true thing. I do say a silent prayer that the notes come out because if they don't come out, we're all out of a job here. We love this job. We love this job. So anyway, <clears throat> please work. <clears throat> you ready? Okay. Thank you. We are away. Come on, everybody, help me out. Wim away. We sing it, sing it. Wim
so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Seagull's Token. Wow. Wait, don't go. Where are you going? Oh, you want to beat the traffic out. All right, go ahead, go. See you, Mom. Don't sit down. You want to switch parts? You know, some of us have seen the show. Or you want to switch parts? You want to sing the wee? Oh, yeah. So you'll be the lead singers. I know the guys can do it. I know about the girls. Oh, come on, girls. Come so on the count of three, everybody will sing wee. And you'll, we'll sing the background. One, two, three, Woodbridge. One more time. Everybody! Big Eddie with me. Come on, everybody. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Seagulls, Tokyo. 